Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss regarding gonorrhea, which is a sexually transmitted disease. So this gonorrhea is a very highly contagious sexually transmitted disease, which is caused by the microorganism uh, Neisseria gonorrhea. So this Neisseria gonorrhea, it's a bacteria, and in specific, it is a gram-negative Diplococci bacteria. So this Neisseria gonorrhea, which will not only causes the infection of the genitals, it will also cause the infection of uh, urethra, cervix, anus, throat, and eye. And so both the sexes are both that means both the genders will get affected by this uh, gonorrhea with this Neisseria gonorrhea. So it differs in male, uh, males and females in coarse severity and ease of recognition. And this gonorrhea disease is most prevalent in lower socioeconomic conditions as well as where there are poor hygiene practices. So in this slide, we can observe Neisseria gonorrhea as uh, a smaller dots. There we will observe uh, a diplococci shape of this Neisseria gonorrhea. And here we can see the 3D picture of this uh, Neisseria gonorrhea. So, and these are all the different flagella which will help the moment of this Neisseria gonorrhea. And so these flagella will help the Neisseria gonorrhea to tightly adhere to the walls of uh, epithelial cells. And if you see the historical background of this uh, gonorrhea, so this gonorrhea is one of the ancient disease which is known to mankind and the first scientific observation on this gonorrhea which is made by the father of our medicine which is known as Hippocrates and in 1300 so in 130 BC so Galen so named the disease as uh, gonorrhea gonorrhea is nothing but a Greek disease so where gono means seed and roya means flow so Galen mistakenly thought whatever the abnormal discharge uh, which is coming out of the penis during gonorrhea as uh, semen and he named it as gonorrhea gono means seed and roya means flow coming to the modes of transmission majorly uh, this gonorrhea will transmit from one person to another person uh, by three routes so the most common route is nothing but sexual transmission and the second is congenital or vertical transmission which is also known as maternal fetal transmission and transmission from formities it is a very uh, rare route of transmission so, so that means uh, very rarely that means even not even one percentage of cases will transmit uh, through this uh, formities so this bacteria are mainly found in the discharge from penis and vaginal fluid from infected men and women coming to the pathogens of this uh, gonorrhea so when coming so before going to discuss regarding pathogenesis we have to know about the transmission rates so if you see uh, female to male transmission uh, this transmission rate will depends on the number of exposures or number of sexual intercourses so if you see female to uh, male transmission so upon one intercourse or upon one exposure the transmission rate is 19 percent and if it is more than uh, four exposures the transmission rate is 57 percent and coming to male to female transmission so there are uh, no proper evidences regarding that and the transmission rate will range from 59 to 92 percent and similarly uh, it is also been found that males were more probably at a great risk from menstruating females who are getting suffered from uh, syphilis so and coming to the pathogens of this uh, gonorrhea so once this so gonorrhea, Neisseria gonorrhea transferred from one person to another person, from male to female or female to male. So it will tightly get adhered to the mucosal walls and slowly it will move into the urethra. So there, whatever the mucosal cells which are there, so those mucosal cells, so will tightly get binded by the flagella of this Neisseria gonorrhea, even even if you urinate so even if the if the if the mixturation will not uh, that means will not uh, eliminate this bacteria from that mucosal surface since it will tightly get adhered to the mucosal wall and uh, this gonococcus that means whatever the neisseria gonorrhea which is there it is a diplococci it will release various endotoxins and causes a damage to the cells which are there in the local environment 
and uh, it will so with the help of that uh, will like let me sorry the with of that flagella it will move from one place to another place within the mucosa and it will also causes damage to the endothelial cells which are epithelial cells which are there which are present on that urethral surface so after killing so many number of cells by releasing various number of endotoxins so this neisseria gonorrhea will enter into the subendothelial tissue by the process of endocytosis and there it will get multiplied and it will release so many number of endotoxins and kills those uh, uh, and epithelial cells and so from there uh, so it will get disseminated throughout the body and resulting in disseminated gonorrheal infection as well as so in the same time so immune whatever our immune cells which are there they will try to kill this neisseria gonorrhea and some of those neisseria gonorrhea organism will get killed by phagocytosis process and whatever the dead cells which are there they will get phagocytosed by our macrophages and all these debris matter will come out as a white colored discharge so where we will find so many number of gonococci in that and in females uh, the that means whenever this guru neisseria gonorrhea will multiply more and more so at the time of menstruation it may spread to the fallopian tubes and it will cause us very severe infection coming to the signs and symptoms so this neisseria gonorrhea which is a diplococci uh, in females it will cause abdominal pain and so there will be pain during intercourse and we will also observe vaginal discharge or bleeding and in males so we will observe kidney infection so urinary tract infections will be observed and along with that there will be burning sensation during urination and inflammation of penis and swollen testicles and discharge from penis will be observed uh, in males and so uh, in detail we already discussed regarding the symptoms in females there will be abdominal pain increased vaginal discharge painful urination uh, painful intercourse and vaginal bleeding between periods will be observed and in males we will observe discharge from the penis and swollen testicles painful urination urinary tract infection and inflammation of the penis will be observed and all these are all the symptoms which are observed which we already discussed in our earlier slide in women and these are all the symptoms which are observed in men so coming to the laboratory diagnosis so uh, this uh, diplococci so neisseria gonorrhea can be identified by gram staining so gram negative diplococci bacteria and we can also diagnose it by culture so microbial culture techniques you can identify this uh, neisseria gonorrhea so this is about the etiology uh, pathogenesis clinical features and diagnosis of gonorrhea